Fala pessoal, tudo bem? Rafael Duarte aqui. Bom, nessa aulinha rápida a gente vai discutir um pouquinho de hepatologia do lóbulo hepático e algumas implicações clínicas dessa parte do conhecimento e no final a gente vai passar termo por termo, palavra por palavra, para a gente reforçar a pronúncia correta dessas palavras, tá bom? Então a gente vai aprender medicina e inglês médico ao mesmo tempo. Bom, aqui a gente vê o lóbulo hepático, né? Hepatic lobule. It is a hexagonally arranged structure. In the edges of this hexagonally arranged structure, we can see the portal triad. So this is the portal triad. And the portal triad is composed by a branch of the hepatic artery, a branch of the portal vein. And remember that the portal vein is uh, responsible for 75% of blood supply of the liver. And we see the bile duct, the bile duct. So this is the portal triad. So the blood from the hepatic artery and the portal vein, they flow through the sinusoids. Sinusoids. Remember that the sinusoids, 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 they are fenestrated capillaries of the liver and the blood flows toward the central vein, in direção a central vein. And the central vein will compose the hepatic vein and then will drain into the IVC, inferior vena cava, okay? IVC. Later on, in a lecture of portal hypertension, we're going to discuss the importance of the sinusoids and we're going to see that the portal hypertension can be pre-hepatic intrahepatic and the intrahepatic can be divided in pre-sinusoidal, intrasinusoidal and post-sinusoidal and the portal hypertension can even be post-hepatic, okay? So the hepatocytes, zepatostos, the hepatocytes, uh, the apco phase, so the apco membrane of the hepatocytes, the apco membrane, They face, elas estão viradas, elas estão em direção, they face the bile canaliculi. And the bile canaliculi will form the bile duct, right? So this is the apco phase of the hepatocytes. We also have the basolateral phase of the hepatocytes. And the basolateral phase of the hepatocytes will face the space of these, remember, space of these, and the sinusoids. The space of this is a space between the hepatocytes and the sinusoids. And within this space of this, it's not a space of dice, it's a space of this, uh, we're gonna see the stellate cells, also known, também conhecido, also known as ITU cells. And the ITU cells, within the space of this, When they are quiescent, quiescent, when they are quiescent, they will store vitamin A. But when they are activated, they will play a role. Eles vão ter uma importância, um papel importante. They will play a role in the development of fibrosis. Because the E2 cells will make deposits of extracellular matrix in the space of this, causing liver fibrosis and leading to the development of cirrhosis, cirrhosis, right? The hepatic lobules can be divided in zones. So zone one is the zone closer to the blood supply, closer to uh, the portal triad. This is zone one. And they have something known as uh, shock liver, ischemic hepatitis, The zone 1 is the least sensitive to ischemia. So zone 1 is the least, a menos sensitive. The least sensitive because it's closer to the blood supply. But the zone 1 is also the most sensitive to viral infections. So in case of viral hepatitis, the zone 1 will be the first one to be damaged. Okay? We also have the zone 3, which is closer to the central vein, right? So the zone 3, because it's 
far away from the portal triad and the blood supply from the hepatic artery and the portal vein, the zone 3 will be the most sensitive to ischemia. Very important information about zone 3 is the fact that it is, it is rich in cytochrome P450, which means that there is a high degree of metabolization of drugs or toxins. So in case of ethanol intoxication or acetaminophen or Tylenol intoxication, there will be a higher amount of metabolites or toxic metabolites in the zone 3, which will make the zone 3 the most damaged in case of ethanol intoxication, Tylenol, acetaminophen intoxication, halothane. We don't use halothane anymore, but some sort of toxins that needs to be metabolized first. Because zone 3 is rich in cytochrome P450, these drugs will be more metabolized in this zone 3, and this zone will be more damaged in those situations. In the middle of zone 1 and zone 3, there is zone 2, which is the most damaged zone in case of yellow fever. So now let's go over the words and expressions to train our pronunciation. Okay? So, lobules, triad, hepatic artery, bile duct, sinusoids. So here is the same principle of cirrhosis. We're going to pronounce this S here. In Portuguese, a gente pronuncia esse S como Z. Né? Sinusoid. E a gente meio que coloca um acento agudo aqui no O. Então, sinusoid. Mas em inglês, esse O vai ter um som de O em vez de O. E esse S vai ser pronunciado como S mesmo. Então, é sinusoids. É a mesma coisa de cirrose. A gente vai falar cirroses. Ok? Space of D's. Not dies. Space of D's. Quiescent, a gente fala quiescente, né? então a, a sílaba que é estressada no inglês e no português muitas vezes muda na palavra, isso muda o sentido, muda quando a pessoa está te ouvindo aqui nos Estados Unidos. Então, quiescent, em inglês é quiescent, quiescent. Matrix, e aqui o mesmo uh, raciocínio de sinusoids, uh, cirrhosis and fibrosis, fibrosis. Uh, ethanol. A gente sabe que a gente traduz a letra E em I, mas a gente não pronuncia uh, literalmente dessa maneira em muitas palavras. Então, a gente não pronuncia ethanol. É ethanol. Acetaminophen or Tylenol. Alcoholic hepatitis. Ok, pessoal? That's it. Essa é a nossa discussãozinha, misturando conhecimento médico, né? muitos conhecimentos high yield para algumas provas e inglês médico treinando também a nossa pronúncia. Vejo você em breve.